Hello, um, I'm here to re represent the TIGERS formula and to educate on the neurotransmitter repair system. So um, there is two types of addiction. There is an environmental piece and a genetic piece. How we specifically treat environmental addiction is with acupuncture. And the reason is because acupuncture elevates dopamine. Everything in the world of addiction is about dopamine. That's where they got the word dope. Dope stimulates dopamine. And we treat that form of addiction, of the environmental addiction, with acupuncture. And I'll explain that in a minute. The second form, again, is genetic. And because it's the gene for addiction, it is called the D2 dopamine, again the word dopamine, gene, which is on the 11th chromosome. And we treat that with IVs. So this is how it works first with the environmental piece. What an environmental addiction is, is something that man has made that's highly addictive, like the additives that they put in cigarettes for people to continue to purchase cigarettes. Or a lot of opiates um, have environmental chemicals that are highly addictive. So no matter if you have the underlying genetic piece or not, if you stop using, you will have a withdrawal effect. So this is what happens with this piece. Here is our brain. In the center of our brain, we have a pituitary. And one of the functions of that pituitary is to fire dopamine. Now why dopamine is so critical for our survival is that dopamine helps us process the events of stress. So let's say that someone calls you up and says your father's having a heart attack. That information comes to our brain, our brain fires dopamine, and dopamine helps you process all the events of that stress in a particular order, like calling an ambulance first, putting the kids in the car second, driving through horrible traffic while somebody is dying. That's what dopamine does. It keeps us grounded and focused and prevents us from having a panic attack or a heart attack or a stroke. That's what the effect of dopamine is. So any brain-altering substance fires dopamine. So we'll start with a glass of wine or a cigarette, two brain-altering substances that fire dopamine. So no matter who you are, if you take a sip of alcohol, it goes up to the brain and it fires dopamine. Okay, but because these are drug and have drug-like properties in them, they fire the mechanism of dopamine in the brain, but then they damage your own ability to produce dopamine. Just like a cigarette. If you see somebody who's really, really stressed out, they light a cigarette, instantly they're relaxed. Well, a cigarette is not a muscle relaxer. A cigarette fires dopamine in the brain, processes the pent-up stress you have in your brain, and you relax. So you put a drink or you smoke a cigarette, goes up to the brain, fires dopamine, damages your own brain's neurotransmitters to produce dopamine. Then the next time you're under stress, all relative to stress, you are realizing that your brain, is, your brain is realizing it's only producing a smaller amount of dopamine. And all of a sudden, now this is the environmental part. And all of a sudden, you're realizing you're drinking twice as much alcohol or you're smoking twice as many cigarettes. You put twice as much alcohol in your mouth, fires the dopamine, damages the dopamine even greater. Then all of a sudden, when you realize you're under stress again, and you're producing a half amount of dopamine that is required by the brain to process stress, all of a sudden you're utilizing alcohol to fire the remaining part of the dopamine, and all of a sudden you're realizing you're drinking an entire bottle of alcohol. You take an entire bottle of alcohol, goes into the brain, fires dopamine. Eventually it damages all the neurotransmitters with time. Okay, so what happens is then they call this the naked brain, where it only fires when you use and doesn't fire at all when you don't use.
okay? Then they call that self-medicating, where people aren't using to get drunk, they're just using to feel normal. If you gave somebody who is at this kind of quantity of alcohol, let's say an opiate of some sort, um, an Oxycontin, a Percocet, what will happen is if they put that in their mouth, wham, hits those receptors so much stronger than alcohol, this person at a quantity, and, and also benzodiazepines, the, the quantity of alcohol is so much stronger than this kind of quantity of alcohol, hits those receptors so hard, the brain goes, this is what I need. This is what makes me grounded. This is what makes me focus. I don't need this stuff anymore. And that's why people can switch their addictions. But then what happens when you're only at one particular opiate or benzo at a quantity of one, one or two tablets a day, and you go up here and you damage those receptors even greater, then all of a sudden this content starts going up. Now all of a sudden you need twice as much. You put that in the brain, damage is even greater. Now all of a sudden you need three times as much. Goes into the brain, damage is even greater. So what happens is quantity goes up whether it's alcohol, until you replace it with something that's stronger than a bottle. Now the reason why people like opiates or benzos <clears throat> throughout time or can rather more than alcohol, because an equivalent of an opiate or a benzo at one tablet can be just as powerful to the brain as a whole bottle of alcohol. And when you're at such a small quantity, you don't have the side effects as you would with a large quantity of alcohol slurred speech, blurred vision, DUIs. So that's why people will switch their addiction when they get to, in the beginning, because this doesn't have as many side effects until you get to quantities of proportions that are extremely high. So what acupuncture is, I know acupuncture is kind of like hocus pocus little stuff, but what acupuncture is is these tiny little needles with stainless steel tops. And what acupuncture does is it realigns the meridian pathways in the body back to the pituitary and neurologically fires dopamine. So we can turn on dopamine from day one. So all of this stuff doesn't look so important while we're healing the underlying genetic component. Okay, so now we get to this part. And the genetic piece. We are going to do two different brains. We are going to make this the non-addictive brain. Somebody born without the gene. And we're going to make this the addictive brain. Somebody born with the gene. I'm going to scoot this over just a tiny bit more. <clears throat> so remember studying the spiral DNA in school? And your spiral DNA is made up of genetic genes and your genetic genes are made up of amino acids. Half of those genetic genes are passed down from your mother. Half of them are passed down from your father. We can take a buccal swab of your mouth, and what they found is there's specific, specific genes for every form of addiction. Opiates, stimulants, gambling, sex, alcohol, obesity, which is glucose, smoking, the specific gene for addiction is called the A1 allele, which is on the 11th chromosome. So this is what happens. The non-addictive brain, we'll just use alcohol because it's one of the most readily abused drugs. So this is the non-addictive brain, somebody born without the A1 allele. The non-addictive brain tries a glass of wine and it goes up to the brain and it breaks down to a substance called acetylcatecholamine, which is a non-addictive substance all day long. So those are the people who have a glass of wine with dinner, a couple of glasses of champagne for New Year's. The alcohol just doesn't do anything for them. Actually, it's an overproduction of dopamine and they want to fall asleep. The addictive brain tries a glass of wine. It also breaks down to the same compound, acetylcatecholamine, a non-addictive compound all day long. But what happens if you have this gene, either passed down from your mother's side of the family or from your father's side, 
It takes this acetic catecholamine and it breaks it down one more time to an aldehyde. Where this brain over here never ever produces an aldehyde from alcohol.